In this video, I want to talk about where your company is drowning in data and not insights. Sounds familiar? Very common. Let's jump right in. Hi there, my name is Ruben and I'm an expert in data and decision making and I help companies turn their volume, their massive amounts of data into insights and of course into better decisions, which is really what we're looking for here. So drowning in data is uh, extremely common, even for small companies. It's just so much easier today than even five years ago. And of course, let alone 20 years ago, the ability to collect data. So there's a few reasons why companies get stuck in this rut. And you gotta remember that at the end of the day, just storing data for the sake of storing it, it's not really helpful. This idea that you might get to in the future, that it will be somehow useful for machine learning, that may or may not happen. It's a bit of a gamble. Instead, it's much more useful to think about how to find those insights and those ideas and those decisions in the initial data. So reason number one, no practical data strategy. That is, there hasn't been any thought to how data should be organized. Now in my first book, The Data Mirage, I talk about a very simple uh, structure you can use, the three Ps, people, process, and providers. So providers being technology. So thinking about what support your people need to analyze data. Do they need someone to build reports for them? Do they need someone to help them analyze the numbers, to walk into the numbers? Do you need training on basic skills like statistics, probabilities, and so on? You really want to make it easy for your people to consume data and not assume that just because the data is there, they will go through it. People are busy. Make it really easy. Make it really easy to go through the numbers to find those insights. Two is process. What's the process for converting data into insights? That could be as simple as a, as a weekly meeting where everyone jumps in and talks about the data, shares ideas, go back and forth, and comes up with next steps or accountabilities. It could be a weekly report or meeting or dashboard that gets sent out by email, whatever it is, what's the process, what's the cadence in which data gets turned into insights. And third, providers, which everyone loves. This is just technology. You know, what technology do you need to store data, to visualize it, take it from one place to another? Lots and lots of things you can do with technology. But it's a third step and really the smallest. If you get the first two right, you'll be in a much better place. Reason number two, you may have all this, but you lack training. It is incredible to me how common it is to run across people who actually do not feel comfortable using data. And there's been some big assumptions that as long as it's there, people will go out and seek it. That's not always the case. So you really wanna have training on how to use the technology, whatever you chose, training on how to go through the data, how to think about it. And of course, training on why this even matters, right? Why go through all this effort? This can all be solved through just basic training, group training, one-on-one -on -one training, probably in a matter of weeks. Number three is no support from data roles. This happens especially to smaller companies and even happens to larger companies who don't have enough resources. You may have a data analyst who's meant to support what's going on with teams but you really want to make sure this is consistent and there's enough of it. So having someone just go through the data on their own will take time. And I met companies who are very self-sufficient when it comes to data, but they hire for it. They specifically look for people who have those skills or they have spent a significant amount of time leveling and upskilling people. So you want to make sure that in the meantime, you do have data specific roles, data analysts, uh, data scientists, perhaps for some of the more advanced things, maybe a business analyst, things like that to understand and help people go through the data. And Number four, perhaps the most surprising, is no tangible motivation. At the end of the day, why does this even matter? I talk in my book of this acronym called WDIM, you know, what, what does it mean? But if you have someone who is already busy, they have way too many things on the plate, they're just simply trying to get through them all and hit their goals, and you tell them, hey, now you have all this data, here's yet another thing, why would they go through it? What's the motivation? The motivation should be if I spend a little bit of time and money on this data, I'm going through reports, thinking about it, using it, I could then take things off my plate. I could then do other things. Maybe a bunch of items that are on my list are completely pointless once I actually look at the data and see what customers are actually doing and thinking. That can be the motivation, but you have to build it out. You have to get people to see it. And of course you have to make it easy for people to get that motivation. But just assuming that data is good for its own sake, I think it's a large mistake. And that's all I have for today. As always, make sure to like and subscribe. Anything you can do on YouTube in the description box below you're gonna find a few links that I've been talking about first data mirage I mentioned in the book earlier you can buy this book anywhere you buy books Amazon Barnes and Nobles chapters Kindle you'll find it number two is the growth needle this is my weekly newsletter where I share similar ideas in a written format events and other things that are taking place you can find that on my website and number three is Twitter follow me tweet me send me questions I've been posting uh, smaller ideas there in a much easier to digest format a tweet finally in the comments section below. Make sure to add any comments, questions, concerns. I love to read them. Until next time, talk soon.